Good afternoon, everyone. New study confirms the sun dominates the Earth's climate. Four major European institutes all coming out saying that this grand solar minimum will lower Earth's temperatures by at least half a degree Celsius. And that's going to mean there will be no increased thermometer readings until 2100 because our Earth actually follows a 60-year Pacific decadal oscillation. Add into this, volcanoes erupting during the grand solar minimums, lots of ash in the air at the moment, record amounts of snow from blizzards across eastern Canada, Nova Scotia ferries stuck in ice, Greenland still continuing record ice growth, all contrary to what the IPCC has told us. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030, and I'll bring more stories to you just like these. New article out, shocking. Four of the major European institutes that used to agree with CO2 greenhouse gas theory, Physical Meteorology Observatory in Davos, Swiss Federal Institute of Aquatic Science and Technology, ETH Zurich, and the University of Bern. All coming out to confirm the sun dominates Earth's climate. These climate modelers admit that clouds are the unsolved driver of these climate models that don't make sense. And they actually came out and even fully said that burning fossil fuels was less important in the computer models than was first suggested showing these natural warming and cooling cycles, 950 AD, 60 AD, 200 BC, abrupt climate change brought on by the sun. They go on to talk about this grand solar minimum occurring right now and intensifying. It's going to lower Earth's temperatures by half a degree Celsius at the minimum. They put the coldest at 2040, so it's going to cool from this point forward to at least 2040 through their calculations. And what's that mean to you and I? Well, there's going to be no increase in heat until after 2100. So everything you've heard about the world's warming to infinity has just been proven wrong by science. And some of the largest institutes on this planet studying CO2 global warming theory. They actually peg it to a natural cycle, the 60-year Pacific Decadal Oscillation, otherwise known as the PDO. There's a direct correlation in earth heating and cooling on this 60-year cycle. Add into this the well-known correlation of grand solar minimums and increase in volcanic activity and aerosols in the atmosphere causing cooling and heavier cloud cover, along with the cosmic ray increases. Here we go. Another sign that this is in play. Record snow, blizzards, Newfoundland, eastern Canada getting over 120 centimeters of snow. And for those of you in the U.S., 2.5 centimeters equals one inch. A couple images for you here. Snow up to the rooftops of homes. Now in Canada, when it's reported in the news as an unbelievable amount of snow, and this is in Gander, which also had record snows two years ago. Seems to be a trend in that area. Here's the actual depth of some of the snow on top of the cars. And all of you hearing about the melting sea ice, oh, it's gonna melt in and we'll use all the Northwest Passage and it's definitely disappearing the sea ice, or so you've been told. Atlantic Ferry, stuck in sea ice off Cape Breton. This off the IceAgeNow.info newsfeed. Nova Scotia Ferry, stuck. They're not really sure when they can get it out. They're sending an icebreaker right now to try to escort it out of this slush pack ice. Image here for you of the escort ship trying to break it free right now and cut a channel through there. Cape Breton here on the map for you, Far Eastern Maritimes. A bit north of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Satellite image for you here. If truly all the sea ice was melting, you think further south latitudes would be the first place that it would disappear, not in the Arctic Circle, which they keep claiming. How can there be so much sea ice this far south if all the ice is disappearing in the north? How can there still be ice further south? This is just simple, commonsensical stuff. 
Further south is warmer than further north. And going along with that, aerosols, cloud cover increasing. The amount of snow and ice on Greenland continues to break records. And once you start to add up all these signs that are around us now, you should start to think about your next steps because in two years from now, the global crop shortages will start and your food prices are going to be going up minimum double. Distant early warning. You're going to need a plan B and I hope you start to think about it right now. And I do thank you for watching the video. And as mentioned before, with the intensification of the grand solar minimum, your food prices are going up. This has wiped out societies every time it comes. Not because it's so cold, because the erratic growing and harvesting. I encourage you to talk to Bob Kudla over at Trade Genius. He'll explain the intensification and where they see the food crop losses coming first.